What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be getting into 1 Samuel chapter 6. Hallelujah. And before we get started, uh, thank everybody uh, who prayed for my father. Uh, the surgery was su successful. Uh, it went well. He just needs prayer for healing now. It was a you know, major surgery. He had to get his whole stomach cut open and part of his intestine removed and it's uh so it's gonna take a a little while to recover but lord willing it'll be quick just pray for uh the pain to be gone and uh for him to heal up quick and also keep me in prayers the infection i, I have hasn't gone away yet uh so pray for me and again pray for my brother-in-law's mother for her her healing and her restoration and before we get started with this study um well also pray for uh the people in canada apparently uh canada shut down their so their social media um they may be allowed to post, but it's, apparently it's not coming up in the feeds and stuff. Uh, they're censoring them from speaking about what's going on over there right now. And uh, some people think it may they may be planning martial law or something based on uh, to shut down these protests and stuff. The truck of protests. But also pray for uh, Ukraine and everything that's going on over there. It's looking like Russia might invade Ukraine and uh, might be a major war. So keep all them in your prayers as well. Uh, for Pete, pray for peace. Pray for uh, no death, no pain. You know, it's inevitable that this stuff is going to happen, but. I don't wish that on anybody. Um, so before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and stand before God. Is going to stand before God for judgment one. I mean, everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life, if you believe that and you truly turn to him for the forgiveness of your sins, ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit, and He will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love Him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And here in 1 Samuel chapter 6, it's a continuation of chapter 5. Chapter 5, we saw that the... Well, chapter 4, we saw that the ark was taken. The Philistines attacked the Israelites, and they took the ark of the covenant. And chapter 5, the last chapter, we saw that how much God was striking uh, the Philistines for having an ark. And uh, also Dagon, their God. And uh, which was just, uh, was based on Nimrod. But uh, it's, uh, it was just a statue. And um, he was striking them with tumors. And uh, it's, I don't think it's mentioned in the last chapter, but we're going to see in this chapter that he also uh, invaded, had, had them uh, 
there was like a, mi a mice plague. And so, let's just get into the chapter. Now the ark of Yahuwah had been in the country of the Philistines seven months. And the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners, saying, What shall we do with the ark of Yahuwah? Tell, tell us how, sh how, we sh how we shall send it to its place. They said, If you send away the ark of the God of Israel, do not send it empty. But you shall surely return to him a guilt offering. Then you will be healed, and it will be known to you why his hand is not removed from you. Then they said, What shall be the guilt offering which we shall return to him? And they said, Five golden tumors and five golden mice, according to the number of the lords of the Philistines. There are five uh, kings of the Philistines. And uh, so five golden tumors and five golden mice. For one plague was on all of you and on all your lords. So you shall make the likenesses of your tumors and likenesses of your mice that ravage the land. So there's an invasion of mice, along with them being struck with tumors, for them having art. And you shall give glory to the God of Israel. Perhaps he will ease his hand from you, your gods and your land. Why then do you harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts when he had, when he had severely dealt with them? Did they not allow the people to go, and they departed? Now therefore take and prepare a new cart, and two milch cows. Mil milch cows are uh, cows that have uh, um, that are producing milk. Now therefore take take and prepare a new cart, and two milch cows on which there has never been a yoke, and hitch the cows to the cart, and take their calves home away from them. Take the ark of Yahuwah and place it on the cart. And put the articles of gold which you return to him as a guilt offering and a box by its side. Then send it away that it may go. Watch if it goes by the way of its, if its own territory to Beth Shemesh, to the Israelite territory. Then he has done this, then he has done us this great evil. Then they will know that uh, it was him. It was God, because they had the ark, that this stuff was happening to them. But if not, then we will know that it's not happened, that it was not His hand that struck us; it happened to us by chance. The men did so, and they took two milch cows and hitched them to the cart, and shut up their calves at home. And they put the ark of Yahuwah on the cart, and the box with the golden mice and the likenesses of their tumors. And the cows took off straight in the way of the direction of Beth Shemesh. They went along the highway, lowing as they went, and did not turn aside to the right or to the left. And the lords of the Philistines followed them to the border of Beth Shemesh. Now the people of Beth Shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley, and they raised their eyes and saw the ark and were glad to see it. <clears throat> You know, the ark is uh, basically the throne of God. And it's interesting, it says they're reaping the wheat, the wheat harvest when the ark came into the city. And I believe it's going to be around the time of wheat harvest. Um, around the time of Pentecost, right before summer, when... God is going to come into the come into this world and the tribulation start. Now the people of Beth Shemesh were reap, reaping their wheat harvest in the valley and they raised their eyes and saw the ark and were glad to see it. The cart the ark or the cart came into the field of Joshua the Beshemite and stood there while it stood there where there was a large stone and they split the wood of the cart and offered the cows as a burnt offering, offering to Yahuwah. The Levites took down the ark of Yahuwah and the box that was in it, in which were the articles of gold, and put them on, on the large stone. And the men of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings and sacrificed sacrifices that day to Yahuwah. 
When the five lords of the Philistines saw it, they returned to Ekron that day, back to their own territory. These are the golden tumors which the Philistines returned for a guilt offering to Yahuwah. One for Ashdod, one for Gaza, one for Ashkelon, one for Gath, and one for Ekron. And the golden mice, according to the number of all the cities of the Philistines, belonging to the five lords. Both of fortified cities and country villages. The large stone on which they set the ark of Yahuwah is a witness to this day in the field of Joshua the Beshemite. And it's interesting that uh, that the ark came and sat beside a, a rock, a stone, and then they set the ark on it. Because the stone, the rock, that's Jesus. And we're going to see in the rest of this chapter, in the next couple of verses, that the Israelites made a mistake and God struck them with a plague. It doesn't specify exactly what happened. But uh, as we're going to read here in a second, they some of them looked into the ark. They weren't supposed to look into it. And and he struck them down. Many, many of them. 50,000. He struck down he struck down some of the men of Beshemesh because they had looked into the ark of Yahuwah. He struck down all the people, fifty thousand and seventy men. And the people mourned because Yahuwah had struck the people with a great slaughter. See the Philistines just suffered for disregarding and mishandling the Ark of God. And then as soon as it got back to the Israelites, they did the same thing. And the people mourned because Yahuwah had struck the people with a great slaughter. The men of Beth Shemesh said, Who is able to stand before Yahuwah, this holy God? And to whom shall, shall he go up from us? Like, uh, as far as the ark. What are we going to do with the ark? Because they were afraid to even... I'm sure they were afraid to even get near it at this point. And to whom shall he go up from us? Speaking about God on the ark. Because that was the where God dwelt. So they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kiriath Jerem, saying, The Philistines have brought back the Ark of Yahuwah. Come down and take it up to you. And that's the end of uh, chapter 6 here in 1 Samuel. Lord willing, we'll be able to continue through these studies. And uh, pretty soon we'll be we'll be uh, end of the story of Saul and then David. So look forward to that. But again, keep my father in prayers. Keep my keep me in prayers for healing for this infection that I have. Um and also my brother in law's mother. And uh that's the end of first Samuel six. Let's see uh what we have in the next chapter. The next chapter, we see the Israelites battling the Philistines. And a little bit about Samuel. And uh, how he directed and led the people. But uh, that's the end of 1 Samuel 6. Brothers and sisters, let's stay strong in faith. Let's enjoy to the end no matter what. Let's walk in all the ways of God. Let's keep his commandments. Let's make sure we have a pure heart. Let's do His will in all things. Let's overcome. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to Him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. That's the end of 1 Samuel 6. Thank you all for tuning in. Love you all. Shalom.